Okay, good. This is lesson one of five lessons. This is for A-level uh, religious studies, philosophy and ethics. This is the religious studies element Buddhism. This is unit three and this is the introduction to Mahayana Buddhism. Uh, you'll already have studied Theravada Buddhism. This is the other great tradition, Mahayana Buddhism. We're going to be looking today at its introduction its origin and its development in the second century uh, before the common era and in the first century after the common era. So at Excel, uh, Buddhism in this part of the course we need to cover uh, in unit three pr practices that shape religious identity the distinctive practices and emphasis of Mahayana Buddhism, how they shape and express religious identity. So we're going to think about today uh, Mahayana's development and its context in the second century before the common era and its development through to the first century in the common era. Uh, notice at the bottom the two key scholars are Arthur uh, or A.L. Basham and later on we'll get to the Dalai Lama. Uh, Basham being an outsider scholar, a SOAS uh, religious studies scholar from London and the Dalai Lama obviously the leader of the Tibetan Buddhists. So the key question we're asking today is how did Mahayana develop in the context of the second century BCE and in the first century CE. Um, today we understand three real schools, three main schools of, of Buddhism. Theravada, uh, the word meaning the way of the elders, was, has its origin particularly in Sri Lanka and then beyond that in, in Southeast Asia, places like Burma and so on, Myanmar. And then Northern Buddhism, Great Vehicle Buddhism, Mahayana Buddhism, finds its home in China, Korea, Japan, Tibet, Mongolia, and so on. There is a, a offshoot, sometimes thought of, of Mahayana, or maybe a, perhaps a whole separate school called Vajrayana, the way of the du diamond thunderbolt, uh, Tibetan Buddhism, which is also found in Mongolia. Is Vajrayana separate? Is it a, a, an actual part of Mahayana or a separate school is, is an important debate. Buddhism. So the rise of Mahayana and thus Vajrayana probably emerged in the second and first century before the common era um, and finds its culmination in, in the first century. AD, but its roots go back approximately to, to the Second Council of Buddhism uh, uh, in the third century BCE. The two main schools of thought of Buddhism, Mahayana, uh, are the earliest school of Mahayana thought, it's called Madhyamaka, and Yogacara was a school that developed later. More on those in, in the next few lessons. What do scholars say are the causes of Mahayana? Um, well, uh, Paul Williams, who's a very important scholar, very interesting scholar, who's written perhaps the most important book on Mahayana Buddhism, says he notes three things. Uh, the rigidity, the rule-based Theravada legalism that, that kind of, well, not everybody could sign up to. And this caused a lot of tension in the, in, in the Sangha, in the, the community of Buddhism, and in, particularly in the orth, ordained Buddhist Sangha. The continuing influence of the Hindu gods is as people converted to Buddhism, they often didn't leave off their 
belief in, in Hinduism. They try to incorporate it. And indeed, we find this in, in the Buddha's own teaching and practice. He appealed to deities and devas as if they were real. And in particular, uh, Paul Williams sees the influence of Hindu devotional practice or bhakti, um, this multi-sensory sort of practice. And so Williams argues the seeds of Mahayana were in Theravada anyway. But exactly what is the origin of Mahayana? Well, Kush, quoting Paul Williams, says the origins of Mahayana are obscure in the, the extreme. Um, you can find Paul Williams on uh, online and he's done some nice YouTube lectures on Mahayana. Which of these four reasons do you think is most important? You might pause the video now and write down which one do you think is most significant in the origin of Mahayana. So we continue. There are other reasons for the cause of Mahayana. The, the Indian mind was developing and a, a cultural spread was needed. There was a further a pressure from Christianity and from the Greek Orthodox Church. It might surprise you, but uh, in the northwest of India, they, there was this place where Eastern Christianity, particularly what's called Nestatorian Christianity, encountered Buddhism and encountered actually Hinduism as well. And in, perhaps it was this encounter with Christianity that influenced. Certainly people like Arthur Basham, our named scholar, thinks this. Another reason perhaps for the causes of Mahayana is, is just it as it grows, any particular religion is never monolithic. It breaks apart. There are it can't be neatly held together. Um, the notion of Buddhism as a, as, as a single religion is more of a Western idea. It follows the idea of Kant, Kant's notion of universal religion. It isn't so interesting what, what Buddhists are interested in. Um, Sasana just means the Buddha's way. Many people find following the Buddha ways as pragmatic, whatever worked for them. Now the arrival of Mahayana is neither good nor bad. It is a, a thing and we can ask how it arose. Um, many Buddhist laity, one issue was they were much more moral than the ordained monks, who the monks behaving badly was a feature of the Buddha's own life. And he had to make them recite every two weeks the rules. And therefore they needed some kind of Buddhism that was suitable for the ordinary person. And Mahayana claims to be Buddhism for everybody, but especially for the laity. So we've mentioned the Greek influence in Northwest India uh, the Nestatorian Church, um, and this is well known in the first or second century. We have the story of the Buddhist monk Nagasena meeting with the king, the Greek king, King Milan, uh, Milanda, and and the and the, the story of the questions of, of uh, uh, King Milanda in the Milana Panda. It's this great uh, this great philosophical discussion you'll remember covers things like um, the existence of the soul what is a person and Nagasena says well I'm just a practical designation um, there's a great deal of, of cultural interchange in the world if you follow and look at the iconography um, the Greek influence on statues of the Buddha is quite pronounced by the second century. And what happens is some Mahayanas are said to worship the Buddha as a, in the same way that Christians worship Christ. Maybe that's, this would have been thought anathema by um, the, the way of the elder Buddhists. 
Now, what we find is the emergence of belief in lots of universes, a whole Buddhaverse. We'll get to in further lessons um, the Trachea doctrine and the, the which emerged out of and is rejected by Theravada. Uh, that there, there are, if there were past Buddhas before the Buddha and future Buddhas after the Buddha, where do they exist? Theravada say there's this world and there's their then there's the world of Nibbana, but Mahayana say there's this third world, this uh, world of the the gods in the heavenly dwelling places are pure, pure like the pure lands, and these heavens are numerous, not just a few of these parallel universes or parallel heavens. There are uh, countless heavens uh, and countless bodhisattvas who inhabit these heavens. Now it's also to do with the increasing size of Buddhism. Buddhism by the year zero has flowered not just across India as Ahsoka had become a Hin uh, from a Hindu to a Buddhist in the second century BCE and then more or less mandated Buddhism as the main religion of India. Uh, but as he mandated the scriptures being written down in Sri Lanka, especially, um, Buddhism grows, it grows and grows. So the question is, was Mahayana an esoteric doctrine that the Buddha kept back, that was passed on by secret methods and eventually discovered um, by Nargajuna in the first century AD and written down in books like the Lotus Sutra? Or is it a collection of deplorable heresies which the pure teaching of the Buddha differs from? And it, and it was a defilement of the pure teachings of the Buddha. Well, it depends on our, your retrospective perspective. If you're Theravada, it's heresy. If you're Mahayana, it was a, it's true Buddhism. Other reasons. We see here in the right here this ongoing growth of Buddhism in a, in a sort of flow diagram. Um, the Second Council, uh, the Great Sangha, the Maha Sanghikas, uh, actually they were a breakaway group which were probably smaller in number ironically, but they had a more liberal view of the, the ethics of Buddhism. Um, perhaps one of the earliest indications of a breakaway group is the Mahasangita. Um, was Buddhism a religion for all? Maybe, maybe many tend to see Theravada as, as pure, whereas Mahayana is syncretistic. Is, is this a reason for its development. As, as Buddhism grew, as Mahayana grew, it, some Buddhists started to incorporate other aspects like Hindu bhakti devotion or Hindu deities or later when it went to China, the indigenous religions of China. Um, and lastly, can, you know, can we see Theravada as the head and Mahayana as the heart? Some people see Theravada as a rational religion and Mahayana as a religion of devotion. While this is not quite right, there is much logic and reasoning in, in for example, Zen Buddhism, um, uh, in other aspects of Tibetan Buddhism. Many Mahayana would reject the claim that their religion is not one of books and not one of thinking. Certainly Theravada does like to see itself as a book of uh, a religion, uh, form of Buddhism that's concerned with the way of the elders, with the books, with the traditions, with logic and argument. But they too like to see themselves as as much interested in, in emotion and in in religious experience. Think about all the writings about um, meditation you find uh, culminating in the fifth century in Buddha Agosha's great commentaries in the Pali literature. So what are the causes of, of Mahayana? Now, another important question is what